Welcome back to America Right Now. I'm Tom Basile. You know, we often talk about how the far left and wokeism has infected education, media, and corporate boardrooms, but it's also having an impact on our health care. Our next guest recently wrote an opinion piece for the Wall Street Journal entitled Keep Politics Out of the Doctor's Office. Joining us now to discuss Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, former associate dean of curriculum at the University of Pennsylvania's Perelman School of Medicine. He's also the chairman of a new organization called Do No Harm. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah. We, we, you know, we, doctor, we've all come, you know, face to face with the politicization of science, I think, during the pandemic. Um, it's not something that we really talked about before. But talk to us about the symptoms of this and the damage that it is doing to American health care. Yes. Well, you know, do no harm was started because we feel that the public and even many physicians are unaware of some of the issues that have arisen. For example, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, New York City actually implemented a plan um, where um, individuals would get scarce uh, anti uh, antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, based on their race. In other words, people of color or African Americans would be eligible for treatment, even if white patients had a, a greater medical need. Mm -hmm. And this is just the the vanguard of a series of uh, ideas that are being promulgated, some of which are based on government policy that will uh, influence medical care by creating a dynamic of discrimination in the physician's office. Yeah. For example, um, there is a proposal in the Medicare regulations which govern how physicians are going to be compensated that physicians who create an anti-racist protocol in their clinical practice will get incremental payments when they see patients in the Medicare system. Now, while superficially this sounds fine, people have to understand that what anti-racism really means is discrimination. Yeah. These terms were invented in part by Ibram Kendi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the, CRT, the basically. So philosophy. I'm sorry? It's, yes, CR, it's, it's, it's CRT for, 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 for doctor's offices, essentially. It, exactly. And, it, and what Kendi has said is that past discrimination requires future discrimination, and this will be a discriminatory policy. So our organization, Do No Harm, is devoted now to informing the public about this, providing a, a forum for physicians who encounter issues like this in their clinical practices to come together and to influence mm -hmm. policy, yeah. including uh, initiating some yeah. legislative uh, actions in order to reverse some of these factors. And, and let Don't me just say, I think we see this as being potentially very harmful to the black community because what it sure. does is undermine trust. Institutions that keep telling us that they're racist are institutions that black uh, families and individuals are unlikely to seek their care. And in fact, those very institutions, some of the greatest academic medical centers in the United States are the ones that have made these kinds of statements are the ones that the patients ought to seek care in rather than to avoid care there. Yeah, you know, the, the pandemic has, decide, has exposed this desire from the left um, including the medical societies, to, to infringe on physician independence in a very frightening way. Um, and you talk about uh, this critical race theory creep into medicine. I just want to read an excerpt of what you wrote in, in the journal this week. And you said, quote, there's no credible evidence that physicians are racist or that minority patients will benefit if health care is built on a race-based foundation. Common sense says patients of all colors will suffer and the public's trust in medical institutions, which has already fallen during the pandemic, will fall further and take patient health with it. A, a, incredibly profound. Um, you, you know, you started this organization, Do No Harm, but you've got so many doctors out there who are retiring, they are frustrated, they're transitioning out of the practice of medicine. Um, we're in the, we're going to end up having a doctor shortage in this country. What do you what can what can they do? What can we do as uh, as patients to try and get wokeism out of the doctor's office? Well, again, I think, uh, you know, an idea that this is a problem, needs to be something that people are aware of. Once awareness occurs, then we start to see people fight back. For example, in the space of the K-12 education problem, where critical race theory has been injected into the classroom, we've now seen a whole variety of legislative agendas being implemented because parents became aware of the problem, spoke up at school board meetings, 
And I think the voice of the public is critical here. We have a, an election yeah. coming up. This is an opportunity for people to voice their concerns about this. And this is America. We change things because the public has a right to speak out and to um, and to uh, be a, a factor yeah. in implementing change. And yeah. I think implementing change is really possible here. All right, Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, I could talk to you for an hour, sir. Uh, I appreciate you writing that piece in The Wall Street Journal. Thank you for being here, sir.